All right. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. All right. Have a good day. All right. Well, good morning. Had a little bit of a technical difficulty here getting started. And uh, thanks to my friend and uh, brother in Christ, Chris Jury, here for helping me out this morning. But uh, I hope that everything is going well. I hope that your family and that your children especially are excited about uh, school starting on Monday. And I know the teachers were here yesterday and the building was uh, filled with excitement. Um, it's not just been summer this year. It's been uh, since the middle of March since we've had students in the building on a regular basis. And so we are ready to go and we are looking forward to a wonderful year. And um, all right, let's see if we can get that off my screen. All right. Uh oh. Uh oh, let's see. All right. Continue on here. Uh, on behalf of Pastor Creed, the Temple Baptist Ministries leadership team, our faculty and staff, um, I am delighted to welcome you to the start of the 2020-2021 school year. Probably better known as the year of COVID, uh, the year where the only thing that seems to be constant is change. And uh, we're doing our best to stay caught up with everything that's going on. And we want to share with you today some of what those changes will be when your children arrive at campus on Monday morning. Normally, we conduct this meeting in, in person. We have you here in the auditorium. We let you then go visit classrooms and do those things. Uh, however, though, because of COVID, because of the guidelines under which everyone is operating at this point, we're doing this meeting <coughs> remotely or uh, through video. And uh, I guess when we're done, we'll all have an idea whether or not well, we think this is a good idea for uh, school versus <clears throat> having having the children uh, in our classrooms. Uh, excuse me just a moment here. We'll see if we can make this better. <clears throat> all right. Throughout the summer, we have been sending pretty much regularly on Monday every week an update so that you would know how things have changed, that you would be able to keep up with things that are going to impact your child's life when he or she returns to school, and the things that, <clears throat> excuse me, the things that we've had to be aware of as we have planned for school. Um, we will continue to send those updates on Monday. Uh, once school starts, we will probably do some things and give you some information with regard to what's going on in a particular class, uh, those types of things. But I, I want you to get uh, used to um, receiving an email. I want you to get used to looking for those emails and um, we want to use those as a regular means of keeping you informed as to what's taking place. And especially as things may need to change um, as we continue to deal with the fallout from, from the COVID virus. From a practical standpoint, we, we've done our best to formulate a plan based on the information that we have been given. Now, we have primarily consulted two um, organizations. First, we've consulted with the North Carolina uh, Department of Health and Human Services, all of the information that they have sent to schools as far as restarting, as far as health guidelines, all of those things we have, we have read, we have, have done our best to, to try to follow those and to put those into place. Um, as we begin our school year. The second organization that we have consulted with is the National Center for Life and Liberty. They are a Christian organization that looks out for the legal interest of churches, schools, ministries across the United States, help us stay informed as to what's going on. And uh, it, it is through them that, that we have drafted the um, waiver uh, for your children to attend school. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we get into the uh, the notes here, but those two organizations we've really consulted and leaned on heavily as we've put information together for our school year. Um, one of the challenges obviously is uh, you can find a group of medical experts to support your opinion. 
Um, and those experts don't always agree. You, you'll have one telling you do plan A, one do plan B. You, you can find them all the way, probably one for every letter of the alphabet. And um, depending on which group of doctors you believe is better qualified, or as I said, that, that may support your particular interest, um, you can probably come away with any number of opinions. Um, our primary focus, and, and we've said this in the updates, and, and you'll probably hear us say this again, our primary focus is we realize that we're not playing with our own children. We're playing with your children as they come to school every day, and it is our desire that they are as healthy or healthier when they come home at the end of the day as they were when you dropped them off in the morning. And in order to do that, there are certain things that we have to do. Um, whether we would personally do them or not doesn't matter but we as a school, as a ministry, that we need to do towards trying to protect the safety and the health of, of your children. <clears throat> and seeking a balance um, to, between the biblical principles of perfect love, casting out fear, and, and, and God being in control as sovereign on one end, um, we also have to deal with the reality that uh, you know, Romans 13 exists. That, that we are to be subject unto those people who are in positions of authority over us, and when they're not asking us to do something that is unbiblical or to, to do something that is, it would be a, a, um, a compromise of our biblical beliefs or our biblical convictions, then uh, to follow their, their request is, is um, an act of obedience, not only to them, but an act of obedience to God. I want you to understand that as a parent and a grandparent, I recognize the fact that no one needs to be protected from my child or my grandchild. They are healthy. OK, but at the same time, I want my child or my grandchild protected from everybody. So if I think your child has germs, you better stay away. And obviously, we all feel that way about our own children, our own grandchildren. We want what's best for them. So as we go through this process, the key that we have to keep it before us is that we are to love one another the way God intends for us to do so. Sometimes we get the idea, well, if I only love my neighbor as myself, I can be selfish. I can be this, I can be that. And the reality is no, God expects me to love my neighbor the way he wants that neighbor loved. And so we're gonna be working together. There's gonna to be some learning curves involved here. There'll be some bumps in the road. And we'll just do the best we can as we move forward together. Let me outline for you some of the differences that you will notice right away when your child arrives at school on Monday. Now, let me remind you, school starts at 8.15 this year, not at 8.30. So you're going to have to be here a little bit earlier. All right, but when your child arrives, okay, you'll, you'll be in car line like you always are. And as your children are getting out of your vehicle, a teacher will be there. The teacher will be wearing a mask, all right, much like this. All right, we're not we're not there to rob your car or do whatever, but uh, for their health and ours as well, we'll we'll be masked. But as they're getting out of the car, we'll be taking their temperature. All right, we're going to do this <clears throat> so that you don't have time to drive away and leave us with a child that's running a fever, um, because um, COVID is the number one thing on everybody's mind. We're not saying that if your child has a fever, he or she has COVID, but that's what everyone's concern is. So we'll be scanning them as they get out of the car. And if their temperature is below a certain level, then we'll let them enter the building. They will need a mask to enter the building. Okay, regardless of their age, they will have to have a mask. And the recommendation is that you have five different cloth masks, one for each day of the week, and then you can wash them over the weekend and prepare again for them to come with a clean mask every Monday. But they will have to have a mask. We will scan their temperature. All right. Uh, depending upon their arrival, they'll either go to the church auditorium or if they arrive after 8.10, they can go directly to class. But everyone is going to the church auditorium this year. They will be socially distanced in there. And uh, they, depending on the numbers, uh, they may be allowed to take their mask off while they're seated in there. But they need to keep their mask with them. Um, if the numbers get to be too high and it gets to be a little bit more crowded than we anticipate, we may have them put their masks back on. They will put their mask on when they're dismissed from the auditorium because the hallways do not allow for social distancing. And so up until the time they actually get into their classroom, they put all of their materials away and they're seated at their desk. They need to wear their mask. 
Once they are seated at their desk in their classroom, the teacher will mention to them, okay, you may not take your mask off. We're going to want them to keep it on their desk or keep it there with them. It obviously, it doesn't do any good for them to get up from their desk at that point. Everybody go over and start stuffing them in book bags, and there's no social distancing, and there's chaos, and then we've taken the mask off. So when they take the mask off, they're going to keep their mask with them at their desk. <clears throat> um, I need to mention to you as a part of this that the legal counsel, um, as well as the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, has discouraged us from allowing parents to come in the building. Their guidelines are that only the people who need to be here for school should be allowed to enter the building in the morning. So this means moms that uh, you want a hug and a kiss and a high five and then get 10 feet away and turn around and come repeat the process and you just can't bear to be to be separated you're going to have to figure out, out a way to do all of that in the parking lot you're not going to be able to come into school and and walk your child to class every day he or she will, will have to figure that out and we'll have teachers and other people here to help them the first few days so they know exactly where they're going um, the business office will be open <clears throat> should you actually need to come in to pay your bill or to do something like that during the day. You will come to the front door by the flagpole. You will buzz. Uh, if you have a mask on, they will let you in. If not, they will come to the door. They will bring you a mask and then they will let you in. But if you're in the building during the school day, you're going to need to have a mask on. And again, we've been encouraged to keep as many people who do not need to be here out of the building as possible. So the goodbyes that we said in the parking lot, we will do <clears throat> on Monday, especially for our kindergarten parents. We will have a photo uh, opportunity for you with Ms. Sheehan so that you don't miss their picture from their first day of school. Um, but we are gonna limit who is allowed to come into the building. <clears throat> While normal instruction is going on in the classroom, your, the child, your children, our students will not be required to wear their masks. Um, we want the teacher to be able to look at the child, see whether or not in their face, it looks like they have some measure of understanding. Uh, of course, not your child, but, but the child seated beside him or her. We don't want them trying to whisper and make noise through their mask and, and all of the things that, that they might try to do being funny. Um, so we're going to let them take them off. And, and then that makes um, answering questions and communicating with the teacher a little bit easier, not trying to shout through your mask. Um, also, we are concerned with the medical experts who have uh, discouraged especially young children from wearing masks all day because there are some potential health issues there that we are concerned again about and again we're, we're playing with your children not ours so we want to keep them as healthy as we can because of covid um, students are not going to be using the drinking fountains during the school day. So they're going to need some bottled water from home. They can have something that's refillable. They can bring a plastic bottle that's disposable. That's entirely up to you. But it is not feasible for us to wander around and, and try to keep track of who used which drinking fountain and, and clean it every, between every single child. So they're going to need to have water with them and um, leave that to you as mom and dad to determine what's the best way to do that. Um, lunchtime will be run a little bit differently, at least to start the school year, again, because of COVID. Um, to begin the school year, students will need to plan on a cold lunch option. We are not going to have the microwaves available for use when we start the school year. Um, otherwise, somebody's got to follow behind every single child and, and clean down every single button and clean every single microwave between every single child who uses it. And uh, then that teacher's not going to get a chance to eat lunch. Now, we're hoping as the school year goes on, as our learning curve improves, that in, in a few weeks we'll be able to let them bring the leftovers from home again and use the microwave and do all those things. But when we start the school year on Monday, all right, do not plan that your child will be able to use the microwave. We're going to, to hold off on that for a few weeks while everything else kind of settles in. Like I said, we, we learn the initial requirements for um, dealing with COVID. Um, that means, of course, that we'll not be doing Chick-fil-A sandwiches initially. We'll not be doing some of the other things that we have done. Again, we hope that as the school year goes on, we will be able to get back into doing that and providing the services that have been um, normally available to us. But again, we're, we're going one step at a time, taking this slowly, trying to make sure that um, we get everything um, done decently in order and we get one set of, of new ideas permanently in place and then we'll, we'll start adding as we go along. Uh, 
uh, your children will be allowed to go to recess. And when they're at recess, we're going to go outside if the weather permits. We do not want them wearing their masks when they're outside. We, we want them to be able to run around and do the things that kids do. Now, we will do our best to keep them from uh, shedding or sharing germs and spreading them all over everywhere. But if you pay attention, children don't care. When it comes time to play, the least concern that they have is somebody might have germs. Now, they still get into the whole deal with, you know, girls or boys might have cooties, but germs, not so much. They just want to play. And so we're, we're going to let them play. As they come in, we'll, we'll use hand sanitizer. We'll do all the things that we're supposed to do. And we will do our best to help them social distance or recess. But let's be honest, you can't play tag and social distance. All right. I got within six feet of you, so you're tagged. Well, no, you didn't. You were six feet, two inches away. Um, so we, we can obviously can't do that. And so we, we want your children to, to have that opportunity to get outside, get some fresh air, get some exercise. And uh, when they come back in, um, we'll go back to class and, and we'll settle in and, and do what needs to be done. At the end of the school day, again, because so many people in the hallway at the same time, um, things going on, it's impossible to social distance. So as they're leaving the building, they'll need to put their mask back on as they're coming out the car line to meet you. <clears throat> so just a few of the things that will be different. And again, I'm sure as the school year goes along, uh, there will be some adjustments to this. And we're hoping for an opportunity at some point that, that we can just go back to our normal lives. But, but let's be honest, COVID has, has made everyone probably um, – uh, aware to the level that we need to be uh, of uh, the ease with which we, we can spread germs, spread disease. And so I don't know if we'll ever get back to, to full normal, but uh, we'll, we'll just take it again as, as things come along. Now, um, some general health reminders. These were sent to you as part of the June 29th update. They will be included in the, the parent student handbook that will be sent home with, with the students on Monday. But some things that, again, we just all need to do, um, not because my child is um, contagious, but because I don't want your child making mine sick. All right. So we have to remember that. That's the guideline. I'm trying to keep everyone else's child healthy by the way my child comes to school. So here's the guidelines. All right. It says the recent events have made us all much more conscious and aware of individual health and its relationship to public health and working together to demonstrate a proper love for our neighbor, the following guidelines must always be followed. A child must be vomit and fever free without aid of medication for a period of at least 24 hours. Now that means if your child threw up after supper last night, he or she cannot come to school today. That means if they woke up with a little bit of fever and you gave them Tylenol, you cannot send them to school, all right? I need you to understand that your children are very good at telling us that I wasn't feeling good, but mommy gave me medicine, and so it's okay for me to be at school. No, it's not okay for them to be at school, okay? Obviously, not every sickness will be COVID, but every time we hear that somebody is sick, the first thought's going to be, I hope it's not COVID. I hope they didn't get close to my child. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. We just have to do the best we can. So. I know part of this is an honor system, but um, where where it's going to catch some of us is you're going to show up today at two o'clock to pick your child up because we called to tell you he or she was running a fever. Okay, he or she cannot come back to school tomorrow. It will not have been 24 hours. So you just need to plan with us on that, and you need to help us on that. All right. Same thing with if a child throws up. All right, we just have to do the best we can to protect everybody, and it's going to be inconvenient for all of us. But again, um, I am commanded to love my neighbor the way God wants me to love him or her. And in order to do that, there are going to be some things that personally I have to do that I might think, well, that's just silly, or that's just inconvenient, or that's just, okay. But it comes down to a matter of obedience to God. And that's what we're trying to teach your children to do. And that's what we need you to help us with. All right. Um, if your child has demonstrated any of the signs of COVID, and I'm not even going to try to give you a list because whatever it was yesterday, something new has been added. All right. But the deal is if your child has demonstrated any of the signs of COVID, 
as they currently are in place, then before he or she can return to school, they must be symptom free as well as fever free for a period of 72 hours. That's three days. Okay, so that's not just overnight. So we have again, we have to work together on that and do the best that we can. Um, if we call to inform you that your child is sick, is running a fever, we will put them in some type of an isolation situation here. You're going to need to be here in two hours or less to pick them up and take them from our campus. So please help us with that. Again, we'll try to be as flexible as we can, but those are the guidelines that we have been given. All right, visitors to campus. Now, this includes parents. I know we don't like to think of ourselves as parents as being visitors, but as far as a school day, you're not sitting in a desk in a classroom, so you're a visitor. Um, we know you, we see you, you're familiar to us, you're not a, a stranger, but you will be a visitor. And so we need you to help us, all right? If you're entering the building, as I already mentioned, you're going to buzz uh, at the front door. Um, if you need to come in, you're going to make a payment on your account, you're going to do something like that. If you have a mask, they will buzz you in. If not, they'll bring you a mask and then they'll let you in. If you're here to pick up a child, we may have you wait at the front door and we'll bring the child to you. Um, and I know that's going to be a little different than what we've done in the past, but again, the guidelines we have is to try to limit as many people who do not need to be in the building from coming in as we possibly can. So we'll all adjust to this. The ladies in the office have been given guidelines, and uh, we'll work with you on that, but just be aware that they may not immediately buzz you and tell you to come in. They may tell you, okay, we'll bring your child to you in just a moment. So just help us with that. And we're looking forward to a great year. We hope this is not a, uh, an inconvenience in any way, but we know it's going to require some getting adjusted to. Um, if you or your child are arriving late, and by this I mean after 8.15. Now, again, school starts at 8.15 this year, not 8.30. So if you're arriving after 8.15, you're going to need to come to the door, buzz, and the ladies in the office will buzz to let your child in. They may ask you why your child is late. But again, we don't want you to come in and come to the office at that point. We just need you to tell us. And uh, in fact, we may tell you that you and your child need to wait at the front door until we can come and take your child's temperature to make sure it's okay for you to leave him or her here at school. But just be aware of that. Things will be a little bit different, again, in that, that way. All right, just some general information for you now. We'll try to go through this as quickly as we can. Again, school begins at 8.15. Um, because we're doing temperatures, because we're doing everything else, you need to plan to arrive by between 5 after 8 and 10 after 8 every morning. If you pull in at 8.14, by the time your child gets out of car, gets his or her temperature scanned, and is permitted to come in the building, they will not be late for school. It'll be 8.15 and they'll have missed the opening bell. So you need to plan to be here no later than 10 after 8 so that your child can have all those things done and also be into his or her classroom to begin school at 815. It's going to be an adjustment. It's going to be an adjustment for our teachers. We're doing this because we're trying to eliminate some of the time that our athletes miss when the bus leaves early. And by starting 15 minutes earlier, we can complete one extra class period in its entirety before they would normally have to leave. So uh, because school is first and all the other things are extracurriculars, we're trying to make sure that we keep them in class as much as we can. So that's the, the primary reason behind starting school 15 minutes early. Uh, if you're the parent of a K-4 or a K-5 student, when they're dismissed, they'll be at the front door by the flagpole and you can meet them there. We would ask that you please park and walk over and meet your child. Afternoon dismissal for students in first through sixth grade will be at 250. 250, and they will be on the end of the building, just like they were last year, uh, furthest from the flagpole, and they'll be arranged by family units, and uh, you or whoever's driving carpool can pick them up. We do ask, please, that you check them out with the teacher, that they not just disappear, but that we actually know who picked them up. We will ask that once you get your child, once you've picked them up, you've checked them out, that child needs to stay in the car. Um, in, the, in the past, we've had situations where, okay, our mom came and got me, but now she wants to go talk to somebody. And so then I'm running around in the parking lot creating problems. And we, we need for you, once you pick them up, they need to stay in the car. So please help us with that. And that'll make everyone else stay just a little bit saner through the afternoon. 
High school students will be dismissed at 3 o'clock this year. Again, we start 15 minutes early. We'll end 15 minutes early. So they'll be ready to be picked up at 3 o'clock. And uh, uh, anyone who is not picked up by 10 after 3 will be sent to after school care. So there's a small period of time there, but you do need to pick them up and, and uh, help us with that. Now, one of the things that we've changed, and this will be in your handbook when you get it, and uh, uh, I want to make you aware of this directly from me, and that is that uh, in the past when we've had uh, home athletic e uh, events, games, or some other type of after-school activity, um, on occasion some of the kids have decided that they don't need to get picked up from school and they're taking a walk down to Taco Bell or over to Kmart or, or do whatever else uh, in that 45 minutes to an hour uh, between school getting out and the start of an actual activity uh, in the gymnasium or whatever wherever else. Um, be, upon the advice of local law enforcement, um, it, with regard to your child's safety, um, you need to pick your child up. We are not going to dismiss them to just go wander around Asheville for 45 minutes unsupervised. If, if you want them to go to the ball game and you're not going to pick them up, then they will be sent to after school care. They will be dismissed from there about 10 minutes before the ball game begins. And then at that point, someone will escort them up to the gym. But we're not going to allow them to just leave the school property and go wander around because mom said they could. No, mom or dad needs to pick them up, and we need to return them to you, not just return them to, to walking around. So please help us with that. If you have any questions, please call the school office. RenWeb is our computerized system for taking care of academic and business functions. It allows you to check your child's uh, homework assignments. It lets you check and see what their grades are. Uh, you have been sent information in an email what your login information is, what your password is. If you cannot get in, you've had some kind of a problem with this, please contact the school office. Talk to Mrs. Henderson. She can help you with this. But we need um, all of you to have access to this. And, and we need to know that you are able to get in and to check things, especially if your child is going to be a distance learner. And what we need to realize is that even though you're planning on your child being in class, if your child is quarantined because he or she's been exposed to corona virus or COVID and uh, they have to stay home for 10 days, at that point they will become a distance learner for that period of time. And so you're going to need to be able to track their homework assignments on a day-by-day -day basis during that, that uh, isolation period, that, that quarantine period. Um, and so that when they return to school in 10 days, they're not 10 days behind. They're right where they need to be and ready to go and continue with their, their classmates. So please help us with that, and please make certain that you have access to get in and to take care of all of those things. Friends of Temple Baptist School is an organization of, of parents. It's a volunteer organization. They do things for us um, at, at spe specific times during the school year. Uh, in the past, they've helped provide food. If we have a faculty meeting after school, they've helped provide snacks for our high school students during exams. Um, if we have a teacher who's sick or perhaps has had a funeral, sometimes these, these parents will also help provide meals in those types of situations. Um, we really appreciate these people. We, I'm, I'm just going to tell you, selfishly, especially um, when we get the Teacher Appreciation Week and, and they start bringing in food for lunch every day, I really enjoy that. All of the different types of food that you all bring are amazing. We, we love it. We appreciate it. And again, if you're, if you're interested in doing this, if you've done it in the past, you want to continue to do it, if you'll just let Mrs. Henderson know that in the office, then we'll get a list together. And as we have need and opportunity, we'll contact you for that. Fundraising. I need to make you aware fundraising is going to be an important part of our surviving this school year. Um, enrollment's down a little bit. The budget's going to be tight. We're going to need to fundraise. But COVID has changed how we fundraise. We, we're really hesitant about any contact, even with people we know, our next door neighbors or whatever else, because, you know, they might be sick. They might make me sick. Um, so we're, we are going to do some fundraising. We're, we're trying to find some things that would be as COVID friendly as possible. Um, but we need for you to begin to decide what level of involvement you're going to have for your children, how you can best help us with this, and keeping your child safe, keeping us safe, uh, so that they don't bring something back to school with them, and at the same time um, to help us with the financial needs that, that we're going to have um, as we continue to try to 
uh, serve your children, serve your family. I want to make you aware of a couple of things um, that were sent in the update for June 22nd. We, we dealt with dress code at that point because we knew it was uh, summer and you would be at some point you'd begin buying clothes for, for school. And so we, we sent this information. Uh, again, if you didn't get it or you can't find it or you forgot what we said, um, it will be in the handbook that will be coming home on Monday. But a couple things I want to mention specifically because obviously not your child. Okay, your child is as honest as honest can be. But somebody else's child in the past has gone home and told their parent all kinds of craziness with regard to a couple of these issues. So I want to let you know from, from me directly to you as the parent how this works. Uh, the first one deals with our young men and the tightness of their pants. Um, we specifically said they're not to wear skinny pa pants, skinny jeans to school. Um, the statement in the handbook, and this is new this year to try to help parents, uh, the statement is that, that um, you as a parent must be able to pinch or pull at least two inches of material down the entire length of the pant leg. So if you grab your child's pant leg, Okay, you should be able to, I don't know if I can get the camera here to see this without discombobulating everything or not. Let's try. All right, you should be able to grab material. If you cannot, okay, if it's just right up against their leg and it's like it's super glued there or um, like it's painted on there, then we're going to consider those to be skinny jeans. That's, that's from the hip to the ankle. You need to be able to easily grab extra material so that they're, they're not too tight. They're not showing every wrinkle of the leg as they, they run down your child's leg. So please help us with that. Um, it's a simple thing, but again, we, we've had some, some um, of our young men tell their moms in particular any number of things. So we're, we're trying to help you with that. Second one that's probably going to get confused as it comes home, so I want to tell you straight up. We have made the statement that we're not going to allow our students to wear hoodies in the classroom. Um, if you've ever sat in the classroom of, let's just say, 11, 12, 13, 14-year-old boys in the number of things that they think it's fun to stick in their classmates' hoods or um, other things that become a distraction rather than a help, um, we, we've just determined some of the way to cut some of that silliness out is to just um, they can wear a sweatshirt doesn't have a hood. They can wear a jacket doesn't have a hood. Um, but hooded sweatshirts, they can wear them to school. They can wear them home from school. They just cannot wear them during the school day sitting in class. So help us with that. Again, they're probably going to come home and tell you all kinds of crazy stories. But again, it's worded that way in the handbook. And you just heard me explain it to you that it only involves once the school day starts, they cannot wear them in class. They're not going to be able to put them on in the hallway between classes real quickly. And they're not going to be able to put them on at lunch. Um, they can put them on at 3 o'clock when it's time to leave and come home. Um, and they'll be good to go. Couple more things and we'll be finished. Um, athletics. I was an athlete in high school. Um, I love athletics. I love competition. I love um, the, the school spirit that is developed around athletics. However, um, athletic competition, interscholastic athletic competition means that we have to interact with students, parents, germs, from other schools, other uh, locales, okay? Because not everybody we play is from, from Asheville. So we have been talking a great deal this summer. And by we, I mean Pastor Creed, Mr. Creed, our athletic director, and myself. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? The bottom line is we want to protect your child. And part of that protection is if an athlete is exposed to COVID at a ball game last night. It comes into school today. Every potential child in the school is now exposed to that, even a kindergartner who is not on a volleyball team or a soccer team. So we were, we have been waiting. We've been talking. One of the things we decided is that we were going to wait for the North Carolina High School Athletic Association to come out with an official position for their schools. Uh, Wednesday this week, they did. They announced that public schools in North Carolina will not be involved in interscholastic athletic competition until sometime in November at the earliest. In following their lead and in 
uh, arriving at our own comfort zone. Again, because we are primarily concerned with the protection of your child as he or she is a part of our student body, we have decided that we will not be involved in interscholastic athletics until November at the earliest. I have no idea if that means we will or will not have a boys soccer season. I have no idea if that means we will or we will not have a girls volleyball season. It's possible to try to reschedule those activities for later in the school year. I do not know. All I can tell you is at this point, because of our concern for the health and safety of the students at Temple Baptist School, we have decided that we're going to follow the lead of the North Carolina High School Athletic Association will not be having interscholastic athletics until November at the earliest. And I hope that's not a problem. I hope you can appreciate the fact that we didn't just rush out and make a decision. We tried to very carefully determine what we wanted to do, but we really felt like when the, the State Athletic Association made their position clear, we felt like that that should be an encouragement to us to follow their lead, not to create a reason for somebody to question that we think we're better than they are, that we don't think that our kids will ever get sick, but that we're just simply going to follow the lead that they put out there. Again, there's no doctrinal thing involved here. There's no biblical uh, principle that's being violated. We just feel like this is part of being a good steward of your child's health, and so we want to do what, what is right for them. Couple record keeping things for you. The school office and the business office personnel have asked me to make sure that you have completed and returned the following things. And the first thing is, is a financial letter and a financial agreement. And the bottom part of this form is the part that we need to have back. It just stipulates you're going to pay over 10 months, you're going to pay over 12 months, whatever your agreement is that you have with the office concerning your tuition and lunch charges, any other. Uh, additional charges that may come uh, from time to time, uh, how you're planning to pay those, and we need to have that on file. The second one is a, a, li a, limit, a waiver of liability here. We'll get in front of the camera right, right here. All right, concerning COVID. Now, I've had several people call me uh, wanting to know, what is this for? What is this for? Why are you doing this? Um, again, upon the recommendation of our legal counsel, um, we are trying to protect ourselves from someone getting sick and deciding that they must have gotten sick at school and so I want the school to pay for their hospitalization, I want the school to pay for their doctor bills, I want the school to pay for this, that, and the other. Even though they've been doing all kinds of other things, they've been going all over Asheville doing Walmart, Ingalls, Publix, wherever, um, they must have gotten sick at school and so I'm going to sue the school for medical um, expenses. And so our legal counsel has advised us that as a means of protection for the safety, the financial security of this ministry that we need for you to complete and return to us a, a waiver of liability. Now, it does not say that uh, if your child climbs up on top of the roof and jumps off during recess and breaks his leg, the, the, that uh, we won't help you with medical. The, the liability and the waiver only applies to, to the COVID situation. And uh, we hope this is not a problem for our students who are going to be distance learners. Yes, we need one of these on file because you're going to be required to come to campus to take your test. So you will have to be in the building and therefore we do need one of these on file for you as well. The school office will be open today until four. Both Mrs. Uh, Chapman and Mrs. Henderson are here. You can wait until Monday to come in and take care of things if you want to. The line will probably be a little longer and probably going to have to make some of you wait outside so that we can maintain social distancing, um, do those things, but we will eventually get to help you. However, there's no one here today as far as other parents. So if you have time and you want to come by and make sure you have your paperwork in and you've got your tuition paid for the month and those types of things, we'd be glad to have you come by today. We'd be glad to help you and, and glad to um, assist you in whatever way we can. Uh, you can, of course, pay online. You can write a check and put that in the mail. You can bring it, just put an envelope, drop it in our mailbox here out in front of school, and then you don't have to come in the building. Um, any number of things. Um, that we can do to help you. We want to do that. If you have any questions, please call us. We're here to help you. We're not here to be crazy and to do, do crazy weird things. Uh, we know it's going to be a crazy year. We know things are going to be different from how we normally have done things. But we're, we're trying to set some safeguards in place, and we look forward to a good year. We ask that for God's blessing, God's protection. We ask that you pray with us for those things 
for our school year. And uh, we, we, if, if we do have some kind of situation, we'll keep you posted. We, we trust that you'll be honest with us concerning your children's health. We'll be honest with you concerning what goes on here. And uh, we, we want what's best for you and your family. And again, we've reminded ourselves over and over, we're not playing with our own kids. We're playing with your kids. And so it's their safety that we want to, to look out for. It's the health of your family, the, the health of your extended family, your loved ones, some of our, our students who are doing distance learning. It's because of the risk of exposing um, someone who is already in a weakened physical state to the potential germs. And so we, we want to work with them and be as lovingly uh, involved with them as we can. And we need for your children to understand that, yeah, these, these folks are classmates and they may at some point show up and, and become an on-campus learner. But right now there are health issues in their family that, that they have to be concerned with. So we hope that you have uh, a good year as a family. We hope that we have a great year as a school. We hope that uh, uh, if anything comes up, that you'll let us assist you with it and, and call and, and make us aware of anything that we can do. And uh, again, thank you for the opportunity to work with your family. Thank you for the opportunity to work with your children. Um, I personally am excited about having children back in the building. Um, I always look forward to summer. I'm always glad for the month of June. Things are a little slower. Things are a little quieter. But usually by the time I get back from July 4, I'm ready for children to be in the building. You get tired of counting books and moving desks and doing things. Um, without the, the individuals for whom all those things become necessary uh, being here. And so this year, it's, it's not just been June, it's been half of March, all of April, all of May, all of June, all of July, two weeks of August. So yes, we're ready for your children to be here. We're excited for them to be here, and we look forward to a great year. And we trust that God will bless. Thank you, and thank your family.